Welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so this is one of our Power of the Platform series sessions on understanding the SQL or SQL behind Flex Reports. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ellie Grecken. I am the Education Services Manager here at Cloud Health and uh, I've been with the company about six years uh, and I am going to be joined by the lovely Sydney Eppner. He is a staff customer success specialist engineer, and he's been with Cloud Health about five years. So between the two of us, I think we've got you covered. Uh, just a little agenda for you today. I'm gonna start with the basics. So what is the what are the flex reports? How do they work? Run you through uh, the system, what it looks like, and uh, running through you through some basic terminology and, and how it's different from our standard reports. And then Sydney's going to take over from there and actually tell you how you he uses it, um, the SQL portion for problem solving, and give you some examples and really walk you through that. So before we begin, uh, if you have questions, please feel free to ask them as we go. Um, you can use the chat or the Q&A. Either one will work. Um, so put them in there and we'll be monitoring it as we go. Uh, if you want a refresher on this session later, we will be posting it to Cloud Health Academy. Um, so we'll send you an email when that is available. And with that, we will also be posting the slides that we have. So you'll have access to all of it. And just a reminder, we're all on mute here, um, except for Sydney and I, just makes things easier when there's a lot of people on the call. So again, if you have any questions, um, put them in the chat or the Q&A and we'll get to them as we can. So let's get started with uh, an introduction to flux reports and what they are. And this should take the first like 10, 15 minutes and then we'll jump into the more complicated things. This is just to level set everybody. So flux reports, what are they? <laughs> They're reports that you can build that are completely customizable to your business needs. It's a way to modify the reports to analyze data from your cloud provider bill using any variable that's available from the cloud provider. The reports pull in multiple variables, perspectives, organizations across an unlimited number of dimensions and measures. And they really help you address the need for specific reporting that may or may not be outside the scope of the standard reporting in the Cloud Health platform. So it allows you to do things like aggregate your data based on specific criteria, and it allows you to visualize the data across more than one axis. And so for example, you could get your daily cost by account and AWS service. I think it's really important to know where your information is coming from. So uh, depending on the cloud that you're in, obviously we pull it in from a different source. If it's AWS, we pull it in from the cost and usage report, the CUR. For Azure, we pull it in from the enterprise agreement or the EA. And from GCP, you can pull in information from BigQuery. You can also use for all clouds, the cost anomaly data um, in your flex reports. So how do you know when you should be using a flex report versus when you should be using one of our standard interactive reports? And what I mean by like a standard interactive report are one of the typical reports that you see in the Cloud Health platform, like our cost history report, let's say, the pretty, pretty picture reports. So, our standard reports are great for out-of-the-box reporting, and they provide like a starting point for data analysis. Like our cost history report that I just mentioned will show you your cost over the last 13 months, broken down by services, include some y-axis options, category options, you can filter it down a little bit, but you're sort of limited to the parameters of that report. Uh, flex reports can pull in many different dimensions and aggregate data over specified time periods. So you could see a breakdown of your cost by cost allocation tag, availability zone, organization, and by billing account, all in one report. And so you'd use a standard report for basic reporting needs. It's pretty visual charts, dashboards, um, numerical information, um, but flex reports are great for granular reporting. So it allows you the ability to customize across multiple dimensions and data points and use resource tags or allocation tags. So from there, I'm actually just gonna jump right into it. And um, I'm going to go into the platform. So 
Flex reports are found under the reports section of the uh, platform under Flex reports. And on this main page, you'll see a list of all of the Flex reports that have been built for your organization. So keep in mind, I'm in a demo sandbox. And so you might see some weird stuff in here, um, but it should look pretty similar to this. Any report that's previously been built, there's three dots next to it, so you can run the report. So it's going to run when you build it, but then if you want the most current data, you have to rerun it. You can save it, edit it, export it, subscribe like any other report. We do have some templates that are pre-built in the platform that are going to uh, allow you, if you don't know what to do or how to start, this will give you some starting points or basic um, flex reports that you could build. And then you can always uh, build on top of these or build your own custom one, which is what I'm going to do by clicking on new report. So the first thing you have to do is give your report a name. Uh, I'm just going to call it power the platform report. And I apologize if you hear a bird in the background. Um, there's also uh, the data set. So I was mentioning earlier, you can choose cost and usage report, enterprise agreement, or uh, big query, as well as anomaly. That's what's available right now for these flex reports. Um, again, demo account. So there was a couple other things in there. Just ignore that. Uh, you choose your time period, so, uh, not time period. You choose whether you'd like to aggregate your data by day or month. So you can take a look at the information at that granularity. And then you choose your time period. So you can choose your month, your previous month, last six months, or a custom time period. It just has to be within the 13 months of data that we keep in the platform. Next, you choose your dimensions and measures. Now, one of the really cool things that we have available throughout this page is contextual inline help. And if you don't know what that is, the little eye icon right here, the eye in the circle, if you hover over it, it'll give you a definition of essentially what we're looking for in that particular uh, field. And so for measures, they represent the values you want to see aggregated in the report. Think of like when you're choosing a customized data set that you'd like to see in your report. And so like in a spreadsheet, this would be like selecting your columns. So if I hit the plus sign here or add measures, I'll be able to add the measures that, um, that you want to have. These are all pulling in. I'm Again, I'm in Amazon right now. So these are Amazon options. Um, so you could pull in savings plan information. You could pull in reservation information. From line items, you'll see all of the options. Now, if you're like, I have no idea what any of these items are, we have the uh, a link to the data definition page. So if you click on that, it will actually take you into the Amazon page where they have a dictionary of what those uh, terms actually mean. But um, let's say I wanna see our discounted spend, like the price we actually paid, which is what you see in the other cost reports, then you would wanna select like net unblended cost. If you'd like to see list price, you'd select like unblended cost. And so you select all the items that you want here, hit apply, and they will show up under the measures section over here. Then for your dimensions, uh, that's how the report is gonna slice and dice the data set essentially. So you're adding additional uh, parameters. So we have our time interval of monthly here and I can add additional things here. So you can add your perspectives and your organizations, which is really nice. So you can pull those in as well as other pieces of information. What I think is cool about the dimensions is each of these has that little eye icon. So you can hover and see what, what the fields actually are. So if you're like, oh yeah, I'd love to know what the product code is for the items that are showing up. Oh yeah, line item description, definitely something that's helpful for me. And so you can add whatever is in, um, important for you. And then these are the standard fields. If you wanted to pull in tags and things like that, you can choose them from the drop down, and you'll see your resource tags. Now, a common question is like, if I have perspectives, why would I need to use tags? Sometimes there's items that you tag that you don't use for perspective. So like for us, we don't use tower and towers are like engineering towers. So maybe I wanted to pull that in here as well. You could hit apply and then you'll see your time interval, your tower, your line item description, your product code, all of the items that we've added. You can filter this like other reports. So the, fiel the fields are items that I've pulled in. 
I can choose them and then um, choose a sub selection of data. So my towers, if I wanted to add a specific tower, I could filter down by that tower here, add it, and then that filter will show. I don't have any filters to add right now, so I'm just gonna leave it. So the next thing that you're gonna see is the report query. This is actually where you see the SQL or SQL syntax. So one of the benefits of Flex reports is that they can be programmatically accessed via our GraphQL API. You can also create your own SQL queries for more advanced reporting. And that's where we're gonna spend most of our time today. I'm just covering the basics before we dive into that. So we're all on the same page. And just the last thing before we jump into that, um, well, actually, I'm just going to say here. So you see your time interval of months that we've selected, your net unblended cost, the resource tag of tower. So literally everything that we've added up here is showing up in this query. So it allowed us to essentially build it without having to touch the query itself for now. And then below there is the report preview. So everything that we've selected, like net unblended, resource tags, line item descriptions, they're all here. So let's jump into why we're really here. So now we know we can build a custom report. That's great, uh, but why? <laughs> why are we doing this and what is, what is the point? So even though there's pretty extensive capabilities within the, the UI, um, there are some additional things that can be done when you're using the SQL functionality. The queries allow you to further customize your report to do things like changing titles of your columns to other things. So like instead of uh, unblended cost, you can call it list price. Uh, you can combine columns, create new measures. It really allows you to go beyond what you see in the report builder. And since Sydney is going to be jumping in and actually building some of these things, I just really wanted to cover a couple of the terminology items that you're gonna hear him say. They might not make so much sense right now, but as he goes through, I promise they will, um, they, they, at least you've heard them before, before he jumps into it. So um, a couple things to think of. A case, when he says case, it's a conditional statement. So when this, then that, or if this occurs, then we want that to happen. The with is an operator. So he's going to build a temporary table. So that is how he gets that temporary table to show. Um, if you want to rename a column, you use as. Average, minimum, maximum, those are all exactly what they sound like. If you want to calculate the average, minimum, or maximum value in a column, um, you can um, cast is when you're converting a data into another data type. So uh, it kind of goes with the next one, which is decimal. So you can use cast to take something like your cost and convert it into a decimal so that you're looking at it as a decimal point, which makes sense. And then coalesce will use kind of a, I'll call it a waterfall feature where it's kind of going down your, your conditional statements and it's saying, all right, the first one that is a non-zero value, that's, that's what we want to bring back. Uh, all of this and any other functions that are available are in our help center. I put the, the link in here below so that when you get access to the slides, they are there for you. On that note, I'm actually going to hand it off to Sydney at this point. We're gonna have a little minute here where we stop sharing and he's gonna take over. Thanks, Ellie. All right, I'll start talking about my problem solving process. As important as knowing how the tool works, um, a tool's still a tool. We, we, need to, we need to know how to build with that tool. We need to know how to, what we're working towards. Um, so before I dive into any of these examples, um, let me just sort of talk through uh, my problem solving process that I, I use to approach um, building new, new reports, um, but I really use it for any, any sort of engagement that I'm, that I'm, I'm going towards. It's, it's pretty generic. Uh, you'll see I've got, it's a three-step process. Um, first step, start at the end. Um, I, uh, you know, uh, for anyone on the line who knows me, I like to do as little work as possible. I like to know when that work day will end. I want to know when I can stop. Um, so that's really why I like to start with the end. I want to define what it is that I'm going towards. And we'll see this in just a few minutes with, um, with a couple of the examples that we'll walk through where we go from like, you know, a word problem, you know, that someone may have brought to you, right? And then, you know, we go and we talk about uh, 
defining what that means from a reporting perspective in, in this context. So again, we start, we start at the end. What does success look like? How do we know that we can stop working? When can we, you know, when we can take, when can we take that lunch break? When is it, when is it be our clock? Um, next, um, we, we go back to the beginning, right? Next, we you know, step two is start the be is, is what is the beginning? Where are we starting from? Have we seen a problem that looks like this before, that looks like the problem we're approaching right now? Um, is there a part of the process that's gonna be repeatable like that, you know, that we're gonna be able to, to, to reuse? Do we know someone who solved it? Do we have an example for it in, um, in the Flex Reports templates, right? No, like you got to do it. Like it's it's really important to you know again for for someone who doesn't like to work very much, uh, know where you start working from. Right, you don't have to recreate the wheel every single time. You don't need to start uh, from nothing every single time. So so defining that beginning point, where are you starting from, is is also critically important. As you know, just as as important as as the end. Once we know where we are, and once we know, and then we know where we're going too. Um, the, the, the rest is just really just plotting the steps to how we, how we get there. So that the, the last part is, is really that filling in that middle, those middle bits. How are we going to plan? How can we break our big task down into smaller tasks so that we can really, we can really achieve it and we can, you know, we can do it and we can do this in, you know, again, in pieces. So that way, I don't know if you've got team members who are working with you, you can, you can break up the task into different pieces, um, you know, or if you can grab, you know, a little bit of here from a little bit there. Um, that's that's when we sort of plot that next piece and we actually go ahead and plan out and do and, and then actually do the work. So um, with that in mind, um, let's just dive in and, and, and go through a couple of quick examples. So I admit this this first example is a little bit contrived. Um, my goal is also to show you, you know, to, to do a pretty simple example where we can where we can review a temporary table because I think it's pretty powerful. Um, so this first example is, is, is more contrived to give us that um, that temporary table. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm jumping to the end here. So, so let me, let me start off with, with just what the problem is. So our first problem is we want to understand, we want to better understand how our accounts are performing over the last 30 days. You know, maybe someone's presented this question to you. Um, I want to, you know, and so what does it mean? How are our accounts performing? Right. So, you know, with cloud health reports, like the interactive reports, you can see like cost over time. Um, you know, but our, our reports aren't really designed for, you know, things like, um, you know, like trend lines or anything like that, right? So, so how do we contextualize some of that information? How do we really understand what we're going, uh, what we're doing, both in terms local to the account itself, right? And then also, um, you know, relative to the other accounts. So, so with that in mind, with, with that being the sort of guiding principle here, I said, okay, let's, let's take a stab at it. And the, the first step that I do, like I said, I start at the end, is I, how do I translate that problem statement into what is my report going to look like? So I said, maybe I'll have an account number um, and then I'll have the min, av, average and max spend and, and total spend per, per that account over those last 30 days. So for that, for that time frame, so that way we can understand, um, you know, are we, you know, what are, what are these trends looking like, um, it, you know, and, and, and track it that way. So that's, that's again, like I said, the, the example is a little bit contrived, but, but here, so, so that's, that's sort of how we're gonna break it down. Now we don't actually like we have the account number. That's an easy thing. That's an easy enough thing to grab. But minimum, daily, and average, maximum those aren't actually available in um, in the cost and usage report, right? So now we're moving on to step you know two. Where's where's the beginning? What's that? What's that starting point? Right? Where are we starting from? That data is. I'll, I'll tell you right now that that's not available in the, in the um, cost and usage report or, or or any of these any of these reports. We'd have to be calculating these things. So the moment I then want to go and start calculating and doing manipulation of these types of um, you know, these, these numbers, that's when I kind of know, it says to myself, okay, that's when I'm going to want to use a temporary table. And so what would that temporary table look like, right? Um, so that temporary table, you know, we're, we might have our days, right? Uh, all of our days. Um, and of course, we'll want to know the account, you know, that, that had, you know, that had usage on some day. And then, you know, maybe the cost associated with it, right? If we're, if we're trying to calculate the min, average, and max cost for, for these different things, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty important here. Um, we don't really need all that much more than, you know, than this uh, for, for where we are right now. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and dive in and I will show you how we go about doing this. And so, again, this is, this is sort of this, this tabular view, this table view here. This is just really how I continue to think about these uh, solving these problems. Like, okay, how do I get how do I get this value? What is it going to look like? Um, you know, again, if this is the account value, how do am I actually going to calculate that value? Where am I going to get that from? That's from that usage account ID, right? So I'm not I'm not showing you the you know me spending time 
um, you know, diving through the, you know, through the cost issues report, going through that data dictionary to figure out what exactly we're trying to go for, right? But uh, that's, um, that's, uh, that, that, that I, I've done some of that work for you here. So we're, we're going to get to, you know, we're going to get to cut to the chase and see how to actually build these things uh, and not spend the time diving into that. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and switch over to the platform. And Ellie, since you're the one who can speak, um, just give me a thumbs up, I guess, or vocally say yes or no. You can you can see my screen. We're now um, at uh, the platform. Is that right? Correct. Excellent. Okay, cool. So I'm here. I've gone to create a new report, just like I was showing. Um, like we said, we're going to use an aggregated day view. We don't need a custom range. We can just grab the last 30 days because that's the parameters of the report. Measures here under a line item, we're grabbing the unblended cost. There's a few different, you know, measures here, like measures are like numbers that we can work with, right? Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab the unblended cost. That's the, you know, the, the cost, um, you know, with, without, without discounts, you'll see this net unblended. If uh, your organization is on discount automation uh, from, from Amazon, from AWS, um, not all of, you know, not all organizations are. So I'm just going to use um, unblended for now and hit apply. Okay, let's add some dimensions like we were talking about. We've got that day pre-populated and let's go ahead and grab that usage account ID and hit apply. Okay. Now we've got ourselves some days. I'll just go ahead and sort, you know, earliest to latest. We've got ourselves some days, we've got ourselves some account numbers and we have some cost. Okay, that looks a lot like this, that's great. Sorry to keep jumping back and forth. I don't mean to make anyone dizzy or anything like that. Um, great. And so you'll see as we click through the platform, it actually went and built out the statement for us. We have the select sum, uh, you know, line, line item on an unblended cost as line item unblended cost. I actually don't really like that name, the line item unblended cost. It is, it is meaningful, right? It's but it, it's sort of a, a technical term. So I'm going to just go ahead and change that to cost. We've got time interval day as day. That that I understand. Line item usage account ID, let's call this um, usage account ID. And so this is, um, I'm just sort of walking you through here a little bit where we can, you know, ways that we can, um, you know, just edit this and you can, you know, sim simple edits here, right? Um, to, the, to the SQL, uh, which will actually translate here. Perfect. And so our, our columns, that all worked out. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we, we got our names, okay. We'll jump back here. So that's we're no we're not that starting point, but that's that that's now just get, that's just given us this data that we then want to query against, right? So we like like we were saying before, we want to go and get this, you know, the minimum, average, and max, and total spend. Um, so this is this is that first table. So we did we sort of went and took our big cost usage report and we shrunk it down. We 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 are looking at just the information. We're now looking at the sub. Uh, the sub information that's just relevant to us, that's just interesting to us. And now we can actually go and run some calculations on that. And so with that, we're going to throw this into uh, a temporary table. And so I, I, I threw that um, that command up here or that, that um, statement up here. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it back in here. So we are going to, to make this a temporary table, we have to go and give it a name. Let's go ahead and give it a name. So with CX temp 30 day cost, so I called this CX temp 30 day cost, you know, um, that's just, you, know, you can call it whatever you'd like as, right? So that's our temporary table. Now it's in, you know, we've, we've thrown that in parentheses. It's now, you know, we're now ready to move on. With that, now we want to, um, well, let me take a step back. You'll notice here that this query is from the AWS CUR. So that's that data set that we're calling from here. Now, when we make our new query, we're not actually calling from that AWS CUR. We want to call the data set that we just built out, right? With those, those, nice, those nice names um, in the columns, uh, the account ID is already set out, the cost is already set out. We don't want to be, you know, we don't have to go through and, and, and go through the, the big AWS CUR anymore. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just go and hit select from, right? So we're making a new select statement. And we're selecting from not the AWS cost usage report, rather from this temporary table that we've just created here. 30 day cost, great. Okay. And now let's go ahead and add some of those existing columns, right? So some of those existing columns would be, um, 
we have uh, right. We want to grab like the account ID, right? So I just I'm just going to paste that in here again, mostly just so I'm not committing any typos. Uh, but we have the CX temp 30 day cost dot account ID, right? So we're referencing this table's account ID column. You can see it here, account ID, and we're calling that that new column. We're just going to give it the same name as account ID. It's still from this 30 day cost. We also need to include that in a group by. Uh, group by clause. So that is going to tell our table how we're going to summarize this data. And again, I'm just pasting really so that I don't have any of these typos. And I'll show you what I'm doing right now. So um, what's going to happen when I hit apply uh, is we are going to not see this table anymore. And we're really just going to see that list of account IDs, nothing else. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, right. And it's not going to tell us anything because we don't actually have any, any measures involved. So let's go ahead and add some of those measures. So um, I've got a measure here, right? So let's let's talk through this um, as account ID. Let's go ahead and hit edit here again. We're gonna put in a comma and our cast function. So this is, we wanna do, we wanna calculate using this um, cost column, right? Using the cost from the 30 day cost table, we are gonna calculate the minimum, that's the function we're act executing on this um, on this value. And we're gonna translate that from this floating point number into a decimal just to make it a little bit easier to read. And we're gonna give it this name minimum cost. Okay, so with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit apply. And now I'll actually be able to see something on this table. Excellent. So we've got our account IDs, we've calculated or we've, we've calculated or found the minimum value on the account by account basis from that temporary table that we set out and created uh, just a moment ago. From here, you know, a lot of these things look really, really similar, right? Like, so um, we're gonna go through and um, like I said, I don't like to do more work than I have to. So um, let's go ahead and grab this column. And now instead of doing the minimum, we still wanna take that cost. We don't, instead of doing the minimum, let's do average. Average is ABG, like Ellie showed us just a minute ago. Um, as a decimal, we'll call this ABG, if I can type, cost, great, and let's do another one. And instead of the minimum or the average, let's do max. All right, and we'll call this max. And let's do one more, um, and we can do the total. So instead of minimum, average, or max, we can do sum. And sum is just, we're gonna add all these up and we will call this, not the minimum, we'll call it total cost. All right, group by account ID, let's hit apply. Great. And so um, let's go ahead and check our work. So we've got the account ID, we've got the minimum cost, average cost, maximum cost, and total cost on a per account basis. We see it on account by account basis for the last 30 days. Excellent. Let's go ahead and, like I said, check our work. We've got the account number, minimum daily, average daily, maximum daily, and total cost. And here we are. We've got it broken down here just in that way that I like thinking about it, right? Um, in that table view. So like, what are our rows? And then how are we going to get any of those values? All right. And that is, that's our first example. Oh, I might as well show you how to do this. Um, when we create a report, we actually have to set a name. We'll call this 30 day cost uh, min av max. We can't use punctuation in there, but we have a description. So um, we will call this min average and total cost for the last 30 days by account. All right, and we can hit save and run. Great. All right, so that takes us back to the list. You'll see that now this is running. Great, if we wanna consume that later, we'll be able to consume that later. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead back and create a new report and get us ready for example two, which I'll talk us through right now. Okay, so 
Um, this is actually real, a real example. This, this example was brought to me by a customer um, some, some time ago. And the customer said to me, they said, um, I really like the EC2 instance hours report. Um, I noticed that, you know, I noticed that our, our S3 spend is getting really big. Um, the EC2 instance hours report is really great for helping us, you know, find, you know, when there's a, when there's an issue with, you know, with a particular, you know, too much traffic on, on a particular instance or too much storage or what have you, right? And so I'd really love to be able to do the same thing for S3. So they said to me, I want to understand the cost per S3 bucket and operation like I can for EC2. So um, how are we gonna do that? Uh, it doesn't exactly look like a temporary table uh, because we're not doing the same types of computations. We're just sort of doing, uh, we're, we're sort of looking at uh, values and, and partial like and, and, and partial sums of values. So to me, this example looks a lot like a conditional, uh, you, know, con you know, where we can use a, an example where you can use conditionals. And, and spoiler alert, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So um, in this report, again, I like to start at the end. I wanna start with what am I going to, what columns am I gonna put in here? Uh, we've got a bucket name, we've got total cost, standard storage, uh, cost, standard storage, you know, in, in usage, um, we can maybe pull in glacier, you know, glacier cost. Um, so uh, before we take it, you know, before, before we can really identify, you know, before we know exactly which columns we want to pull in, um, I just want to show you a little bit of what that process looks like um, for maybe how I decided for, for my organization, um, how I decided on standard storage and Glacier, right? But it might be a little bit different for, for you and for your organization. So I'm going to go back, uh, jump back to the platform, and I will poke around just for a minute, and I will show you what we're after. Okay. So let's go ahead and head back in. In this case, we want to aggregate by month. Um, knowing the daily cost for these operations is not necessarily going to be helpful. Maybe it would be if you know we were trying to sort of find a spike or something like that, but that's not really, we're sort of looking for something more more aggregate right now. Um, let's grab the previous month so we know it's just a you know, full month. Um, let's start pulling in some measures. Um, that unblended cost is a, good, is a good one to start with again. Let's, uh, let's use that. Um, and some dimensions. We know we're going to be adding some filters here. Um, so, like, because this is this is specifically for S3 and, and maybe for you know, just just for S3 buckets, right? So, um, let's go ahead and pull in the product code. Okay. Once we pull in uh, a, an item like that, we can have we you know I don't, we haven't really touched on it yet. But we have this idea of filters, right? So we have this filter. Um, I happen to know uh, what this is called. Amazon S, S uh, helps if I can type S3. Great. So that's going to give us a filter just on, on Amazon S3. And I saw that there was a question before in the chat. Um, you know, what are some of those filters look like? What does some of that logic look like, right? Or how we how do we combine that? Um, and just sort of noting that here, right? So we can say where is that where clause? So that's where we'd set up a filter line item product code, because that's what we were saying for, that's what we were searching for, is in S3. So we're saying we only want things where the line item product code is part of this list, right? So in, in S3. So uh, if you wanted to have multiple things, you could do a list here. You could, you know, you couldn't really do combinatorial things for, for this particular type of a, you know, product, you know, for this, for this type of thing, but you would say maybe it looks like or something like that. So um, that's how we would add um, some of those filters. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add another dimension here. Now that we're filtering down just to look at S3, how do we know what are these what are these different operations? How do we understand the breakdown of these different component charges for, for our, our buckets, right? So let's go ahead and add those operations in. Great. Um, and tell you what, we don't actually need to see this product code now that we're, we know that we're looking at just S3. So I can just click on the X and pull it out. Okay, and now we can see we've got charges for all these different services. You know, put object, lot put object is pretty expensive. Um, get object also really expensive. So those are the charges for you know adding and putting things. Don't know what that is. That doesn't have an operation associated. Probably a credit of some kind, right? Let's look for any other big spenders. Um, tell you what, I don't know why I'm doing this the hard way. Let's go ahead and sort. Um, standard storage, perfect. So let me just make, let me just note some of these things down. Right, we've got glacier storage, we've got standard storage, and we have 
um, where was it? Put object. I'll go ahead and copy that as well. Right. And let's go ahead and, and dive right in. Okay. Before we get any, before we get too much further, I'm just going to go ahead and modify this query just a little bit. Um, up here in the dimensions, just um, expanding that query so everyone can see. Uh, we don't need to know the operation anymore because we're going to actually be something, doing this, this case statement when, um, and I'll walk you through that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and we do want to know what the resource is though. So what we do want to know what that bucket name is. Let's hit apply. Okay, so now we've got those resource IDs. Let's go ahead and just clean this up just a little bit. We don't actually need to know the month anymore, do we? We know we're only looking at one month, so we can even pull that up just to make the table a little bit cleaner to look at. Okay, so now I've got resource ID and unblended cost. Um, I like this to just be a little bit easier to read, and I'm going to just call this, um, what should I call this? I'll call this the S3 bucket. U C K E T. Perfect. Okay. And let's go ahead. You know, you know me. Line item unblended cost. That's unnecessarily wordy. And we can hit apply. Right. So it just gave us that little error because it was no longer because it did not see the um that title anymore in the in our report. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that back because we had that ordered. Perfect. Excellent. And now we've got our costs in our buckets. Let's go ahead and just take a look. How are we doing? All right. We've got our bucket name and our total cost. Those are sort of the simple columns, right? Those are the aggregate columns. Pretty simple. We don't we don't need any case statements for those because we've got a bucket ID and we're just doing the sum of the cost by that bucket ID. Next, let's go ahead and break down what these conditional statements look like. So I, I said before that I want to use these conditional statements for uh, when I want to sum items that look like a particular thing, right? Um, where I only want to get the subset of some of these items. Uh, and so in that case, let's, let's go ahead and take a look. So we're doing a sum and this is a case. What are we summing? Where it's a case when uh, the line item operation is like standard storage. Then we want to cast the line of unblended cost as a decimal. And, you know, so that's just sort of, we're getting it, we're, we're turning it into a decimal, so it's easier to read. And then we're going to sum up all those things. And we're going to call that column standard storage cost. Okay. So if this works and, you know, it should. Spoiler, I've done it. Um, what this will allow us to see now is that um, we're going to sum just the standard storage component of this cost of, of these various items, right? So always this should be this should never be the standard storage cost component should never be greater than the, the total cost, right? It, it can be maybe you only have standard storage costs, like you've got no other operations that are that are costing you money on a bucket by bucket basis um, or for a particular bucket. Um, but you know, it should always be less great. And so we're seeing that all these numbers are less, which is great. Excellent. It's working. And just, I'm calling this out here just, uh, just briefly. So you'll see that this cost column, we go out to a, a huge number of, of decimal places. That's because the, the numbers here in the, in the, you know, the line of unblended cost, those are floating point numbers here in the standard storage cost. What we are doing, like we're using that cast argument just to, to trim those numbers down and sort of. Uh, define the precision to make, I, I think it's a little bit easier to read, right? When you don't have all these numbers past the, past the decimal place where I'm casting those into a decimal. So um, it's just changing that, um, that uh, number, if, in, you know, uh, the, the, the data type from a floating point number to, uh, to a, a, a decimal place. Um, and again, I just, I think that's, you know, that's easier for me to read. So with that in mind, let's go ahead. Um, there's one other thing I guess I can show you here right now. Let me go ahead and say, um, oh, uh, well, never mind. We've got all of these uh, these different. Um, we have these different uh, operations that we are interested in, right? So let's go ahead and grab that, and like we did with 
our in our last example, right, where some of these numbers, you know, where the, the way we calculate and compute these columns look, look pretty similar, right? We can do, go ahead and do that again here, right? So we grabbed a few different options or a few different items, right? We had said we didn't just want the, the put object, we didn't just want the standard storage cost, we also want the, the put object cost, right? So let's go ahead and I'm just editing that here. So I pasted that whole clause again. When the except now I'm changing it so that way when the line item operation looks like put object, then da 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 and call it the put object cost. Great. Let's go ahead and apply. Great. You'll notice here that there's a couple of places that are, you know, where there is no um where there where there where there's no value. And that's because there's no, you know, there, there wasn't any cost associated with this. I also, you know, being the, you know, being a little bit um I know, particular, let's say, about the, the format of the of these reports. I also like, I don't, I think these minuses are a little bit difficult to, or, or distracting to read. So let's go ahead and I'll show you another way, that, another thing that we can do. So what we can do is there's another function that Ellie was describing before, it's that coalesce, C-O-A-L-E-S-C-E. -E. Did I get that right? Bingo, coalesce. Great. And so coalesce, what it does is it's going to give us the first value that is not null. So in this case, that minus sign here is corresponding to a, a, a null value. And so there's just there's just nothing for it to show up. And so what I'm saying is, don't give me a null value. Give me, give me a zero. I think that'll be easier for me to read. And so assuming that worked, we'll now start seeing 0 0.000. Excellent, because we're still using that, those three decimal places here. Great. And so let's go ahead and grab that again and you'll notice here this is this gets a little bit repetitive so I'll do this I'll do this one more time just to sort of drive that point home when the operation looks like well let's not do put object let's do get object uh, get object and we'll call this get object from the WCR excellent um, Great. And you'll notice again, it worked. You've got those zeros. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. So I'll call this example, um, you know, like we don't, we don't necessarily have to dive into and hit all of the, you know, all of these columns. I'll leave that as an exercise for, for everyone, you know, at home um, or, uh, you know, spoiler, I've got a, a more complete version of this um, with a whole bunch of columns called out um, both for cost and for usage. Uh, that'll be in the deck in the appendix. And with that, we can jump back in. And I just wanted to thank you all for your time um, just now, uh, walking you through a couple of these examples. Uh, Ellie, I will turn it back over to you to close us out. Um, and I will also take a look back at the q and I see that number is starting to go up now that, um, and I will see if there's anything that I can, I can mention. Excellent, thank you so much, Sydney. Yeah, so thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, appreciate your time and uh, being here. So uh, like we mentioned before, so Sydney's going to spend a couple more minutes here just finishing up answering any questions that are the Q&A in chat. So if you do have any questions that are still around, please feel free to put them in there and we'll make sure to get to them. Uh, the recording, uh, once we're done here, I'm going to make sure that we clean it up so it's nice and pretty and we'll post it in the Academy along with the slide deck. Um, which will include, I know there were a couple questions about like the things that Sydney had covered in detail. So there will be some, um, uh, I'm not gonna call them templates, but essentially templates <laughs> that you can that you can look at of things that he's built um, that you can then have access to. There's some gonna be some links that are in there for some documents that we think are useful for you. And um, so this will uh, be available most likely tomorrow. I'm going to try to get it done today and uh, usually we send out a follow-up email just letting you know when that is available so look out for that perfect i'll just i'll do my best to start answering some of these questions that we've uh, that have come up um yep. so uh i see one in the chat uh yes about a cheat sheet um we have uh ellie i don't know if you, you're yeah you're still presenting if you want to take a look and just show everyone the the template um uh sorry and um back in the platform if you jump back over the platform um, on Flex Reports, we have view templates. So this is a bunch of examples that our engineering department, our, our, pro our product team maintains that they, they threw in there. Um, we are 
speaking with them to try to understand how we can maybe get some more real life examples. Um, let's say, you know, examples that we're getting, you know, from, from customers, you know, like, like the ones that we you know, talked through just now. Um, we're looking at, you know, a, a way to, to get some of those added to here. So you'll be able to track some of those and, and see uh, some of that. Um, all right, in no particular order, um, you know, I'm just gonna go through and answer some of these questions. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this one live. Can we uh, create filters and dimensions from perspectives? Absolutely, yes, we can. Um, yeah, so uh, perspectives would be treated just like any other dimension uh, and the group names would just be treated like any other dimension. Back, I, I think we answered this um, in the, you know, in, in the in the demo. You're asking, will we get the full SQL statement? Um, you know, I, I I think you know, like like you said, you saw that we've got, you know, in, within within our query, um, that's you know that that's our our SQL statement. I'm not sure if you meant something else by that. You know, feel free to just post on the chat um, if there was if you meant something else by that. Um, uh, Asaf, you're asking, how do we enable these for Azure? Um, currently, we support uh, Azure Enterprise Agreements. Um, you know, I, I, uh, there was a question before uh, that, that I answered earlier on um, that, was suggest that was asking if we plan to support other, you know, um, routes to market for Azure. Um, I, I mentioned that while I'm not on the product team, I do know that that um, adding other you know, adding support for other routes to markets so like through partner or through pay as you go, right? Those are, you know, in, you know, within our product strategy, aligned with our product strategy. I just can't comment on, on when that will be. Um, but yes, uh, we, we are, we are trying to do that as, as far as I understand it. Chelsea, you had asked, can we use, uh, you know, hyphens to add uh, comments? I assume you mean within the query. I don't actually know. I haven't tried it. Um, but if you get an error, let us know. Um, you know, maybe we, if we have time at the end of this, we can, we can even hop back in and, and give it a try. Carriage returns to make it easier. This is also a question from Chelsea. I, uh, I really I agree with you. It would, it would be nicer. Um, it would be easier to read. Uh, and I think it would be easier to, uh, to work on some of these reports. Um, it doesn't work today. Uh, you know, it would make a lot of these really repetitive, uh, repetitive queries where you're trying to pull in a lot of case statements or a lot of columns, just easier to read. Um, so I, you know, I sometimes work on, on uh, some of these longer, more repetitive queries. I don't do them in the platform. I do them in a, you know, a text editor, uh, you know, like, um, you know, on my Mac, I'm using DB edit or VS code, uh, just something that has SQL, you know, some text highlighting to help me sort of find some of that. So that's what I do personally. And then I go back and I clean it up and sort of throw the, the SQL statement as one line into that, into this sort of JSON report query thing of above here that we've got in, in the platform. So that, that's, that's how I do it. Um, I actually haven't tested it lately with our, with our APIs. I don't know if our, um, you know, if, if, cause we do support um, submitting these queries via, you know, programmatically via API. So you don't have to do this through the, through the GUI here. Um, if you did that, I'm not sure how carriage returns are handled there. Uh, I haven't tested that, but, that might work if that is, um, uh, you know, more interesting to you. Uh, Mark asks, is this, you know, is there any particular flavor of SQL? Um, at one point, I think I knew the answer to this, um, you know, with regards to the engine that we're using. Um, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly what that is. It is in our documentation and, and as Ellie called out, we do have a list of supported uh, SQL functions. So I think you will, you know, it, within our help center, you'll you'll find uh, the list of, of supported SQL functions. So, not exactly answering your question, um, but you know, it, it 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 at least cuts to the meat of it. I hope. Okay, um, let's see what else. Uh, unit price, unblended rate without any aggregation in Flex reports. Ray, I'm not really sure what um, what you mean by that. Um, go feel you know feel free to you know sort of um, post in the chat if you want to clarify that if you're still around. Um, otherwise, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Okay, Luke asks, can SQL queries be structured better for readability? I think I covered this with, um, as part of Chelsea, uh, you, know, Chelsea you know, Chelsea's question. Um, I happen to do this, uh, like I was saying, I, I do most of that. I find it's a little bit easier just in a, you know, in a text editor that understands SQL a little bit better. Um, the query editor there is really a longer, something. So C the SQL is just really a component of that, that JSON structure. So um, not, 
Not exactly, um, and I, I don't know. I don't know of any plans to 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 make any changes there. So, excellent. How are we um, on questions? Let me just go through. Okay. There was one that Perfect. I heard on like hourly. We got two requests for supporting hourly in Flex Reports, and I I didn't know if it was on the roadmap or not. I, I I do not know at this time. I know for some of these some of these um, you know some of the artifacts that we're using do support hourly, like the cost and use report um, supports hourly. Um, I don't know if uh, I, I don't believe the Azure file supports hourly, um, but um, you know so that it, there there may be there may be some difference between clouds and, and what we can support. Um, I can't I I don't know about uh, you know how as it relates to our roadmap. Um, so sorry to have uh, not an answer there for that. Okay, uh, Chelsea, I see you asked another question. I feel question. better that I didn't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, unblended cost is a float. Um, how do we figure out what data types the columns are in? Um, yes, uh, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, I don't have a good answer for how we how we determine the the data types. I think just the you know a lot of these you know. It, the, well, let me let me put it this way: the the measures that I've come across have all been have all been floating points, which is why I cast them all into into uh, decimals to make it a little bit easier to read and get a little bit more consistent. So, um, you know, so I, I I'm not necessarily you know I I don't necessarily know for certain you know for for sure I'm not certain, but uh, my understanding is that they're all just uh, floating points that I just then cast later. Cool. Ah, Norbert, you are uh, you are correctly pointing out that the hourly reports in Cloud Health do show up in in units of 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 two, right? So it's actually every for every two hours. Um, there used to be, I remember, there used to be something where we were able. There was a there was a you know a, there wasn't something for this in the UI. I don't remember what the what the sort of um, query is to append to the URL, but there is a way to get more granular. Uh, view, you know, a, a, an hourly view for some for some reports, um, which is why it's not available in the, in the in the UI. But I think for like the cost history report for AWS, and you you do have a way to see um, to break those those two units down into a, into single you know single hourly um, units, so you don't have that two hour problem. Um, so uh, I will see if I can find that, uh, and if I can, um, we can you know we can figure out how to get that to you. Uh, you know, so Norbert, I don't know who your TAM is, but go ahead and, you know, ask them and I'll see if I can't get that uh, to them. You got it. With that, I think we've answered all the questions that have come in so far. Um, are we are we caught up on the chat too, looks like. Um, thank you, thank you everyone uh, for joining. Um, it's been, you know, pleasure prepping for this and I hope, uh, I hope you got some value out of it. So thank you. Appreciate all your time, everyone. Thank you so much.